Well, I met them only when she was 14, I was 16. I had only bath swimming pool. We were dancing, actually. We used to put the floor down over the bath in winter. And I walked her home and we made a date for the following Monday. And from there on in, we went out with one another and we'd fall out and then they'd get back again. And then I went in the RAF. When I came back home, we took up again. And eventually we got engaged and then we got married in 52. At that time, housing situation were like it is now. You couldn't get house full of the money. And so we went to live with our parents. We eventually got his own little house. David was born. Jane came along. Robert came along. We were quite happy. And then some bastard broke in and Molly was in the kitchen. And from there on in, she started to have problems with her nerves. Well, she got very timid, and eventually she finished up with agoraphobia. That put a strain on marriage, but we persevered. One day, we were out shopping with a granddaughter, and I was wandering off on my own. And when they come back, they were laughing. My granddaughter told me we were walking through Marks and Spencers and there was a chap bent down and Grandma walked straight into him with trolley and knocked him flying. <laughs> she says, no, she could do a laugh. And I thought, well, it's not her. We went out of Marks and Sparks and she walked straight into a pillar with a trolley. And I said to her, I says, what the hell are you doing? She says, I don't know. So I says, right, and I took her down to the doctors. Oh, you better go down to A&E. Anyway, we went there and she had an x-ray and she had to bleed on her brain. We started to see a brain specialist and after a while he said it stopped and it's not done any damage that we can see. She started to see this psychiatrist from St Mary's with uh, what were they having about the problems before with the agoraphobia. And she came one day to see her and she said, you've got dementia. And from there on it was a downhill spiral. She eventually couldn't walk very far, so we got a wheelchair. So I had to wheel her about everywhere, loading the wheelchair in and out of the car and one thing and another. People don't appreciate what it's taking out of you to be a carer. And I did that for about nine years. And the thing that really brought it home to me was once she was sat on the sofa and I went in the room and she said, who are you? And I said, it's, it's Raymond, your husband. And she's screaming and shouting, you're not my husband, you're not my husband, get out. And she screamed at me and tried to claw my eyes out. Anyway, I got to calm down and then she, she just changed again. She said, oh, I'm tired, I'll go to bed. But that really brought it home to me, what dementia means. But eventually, I did get some help from social. Come and put her handrail in, so help her in and out of the bath. But I had to lift her in and out of the bath. And then social worker who came, she says, you got critical carer's fatigue. She says, if you don't put her in a home, you'll be in a bloody home yourself, or in a box. But anyway, eventually she had to go in the home and it was there where they found her collapse one morning. She never came out of the coma. And I was sat with her, with the family were there. And I went to the toilet and while I was at the toilet she died. We were married 66 years and she was 85 when she died feel guilty that I wasn't there when she went. We had as good terms, we had as bad terms, and we all just managed to get through what was happening. I find that it's left me very emotional. At times I've spoke to her and I realised I'm just talking to myself. One thing I have learnt is take nothing for granted.